all right, honky sunk. Oh, it's quite powerful, quite resigned, yeah. quite sort of world weary. I'm here, and I mean business this time. When you say business, do you literally mean business, like CEO of a large company? Or... Yeah, if if need be. Yeah. If, if if Athletic Women's has become a large company since the last time we did one, then yes. Do you have? A I fa- regard myself as the CEO. Do you have a favourite large company? I mean, large company. Um, the largest one I can think of that I'm. Oh, really no, I didn't into. ask you what you got. All oh, no. right, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> Please, let me Sorry, finish. The largest one I can think of that I'm into, into, Neto. You really like Neto? Yeah. Now, for people who don't live in the North East, tell them what Neto is. It's like Aldi. But? But they, they shut about five years ago. All oh, right, but you've always, you, you like the <laughs> it's memory It's a nostalgia thing. Yeah. It's like Toffos. Neto, Toffo. Hey, hey, yeah. do you remember, remember Neto? Do you remember Neto from about 2011? Do you remember those weird trolleys they had? Your brass hand would get stuck in the mechanism so you'd shit your pants. Hey. Hey. Listen, I've got some names for you this week because right. I'm fed up with being dictated to. I do, I do exactly the opposite of dictate to you, actually. I say, here is a choice of names yeah, or it, you can be Ronnie the, Hot Dog. Yeah, but there's an inherent sort of threat there, I think. It's kind of like pick one of these names... Because I've made an effort to come up with them. Do you know I once went, Andy? I'm sorry, just remembering. I did. I, t- I, I might have told you this before, but I once. Did, have I told you about when I hurt my eye with a bit of grass? And yes. I, yeah. Unless that was someone else that told me that, because it sounds quite common. Oh, okay. Well, forget it then. Right. I won't no, tell, tell you. It, I won't on. tell you. Well, I went to. I was filming Randall Nopkirk deceased. <laughs> I was. And I In bent, South Africa. <laughs> and at some point, I bent down and just a long bit of grass. You mm-hmm. know the ones that have the uh, bits on the end that you can like throw. Yeah, and the stick and is that grass? I don't know, hay or grass, whatever. It is. Yeah, and it hit, and it really hurt my eye. So I went to accident and emergencies, and <laughs> it was a Chinese uh, nurse, and she said, "What's happened?" And I said, "I um, hurt my eye with a bit of grass." And she said, "Bob's pointing to his eye with his finger as yeah, if it's a and bit she of grass said, at this point." She said, "Glass, oh. right?" <laughs> and it's not a racist uh, thing. It's what she said. Yeah. I said, "No, we're not glass, right? It's grass." And then I thought. And I genuinely, I thought this would be easier. So I said, nettle, right? She said, metal? <laughs> <laughs> and I could see it. I would be like, anyway, I just, isn't it amusing? Like the, you know, the cultural mis- differences. Under- yeah. We're going to miss all that post Brexit, aren't we? No, we'll still remain. Anyway, I've got four names for you. No, three names for you to choose from. All right. Or you can be, be Honky Tonk. Honky Tonk. Right, you can be Colonel Pipe Bomb. <laughs> yeah, tempted. I haven't got a backstory because I can't be asked. Colonel Pipe Bomb, you can be the hidden chest. Right. Mysterious, eh? The lost book. Possibly remember. a wrestler. The hidden chest. The hidden chest, okay. Or O'Leary Sons. A family concern. Scrap dealers, is it? Might be. If you oh, want to be. Or you can be Honky Tonk. Um, what was the first one? First one was Colonel Pipe Bomb. <laughs> Do you know, for one day and one day only, I'm going to be Colonel Pipe Bomb. Right. Enjoy right. it. Okay, now I, I wasn't going to offer you any, but there's two. I'm just seeing you today. You're looking quite world weary, relaxed, resigned, you know. Laid but back. Lay, a bit laid back. So I was thinking, out. maybe you would like to be called Barry Homeowner. Right. You know what I mean? There's, There's that relaxed feeling that you get from being yeah. a homeowner. Mortgage paid off? Yeah. or it's is Barry. Is. is Barry a homeowner? There's something about him that yeah. makes me think he is. It's the yeah. sweater over his shoulders, knotted. Yeah. yeah. So Barry Homeowner. Good. Or you could be, I'm thinking that this person, maybe, I don't know if he's Turkish or not, but I know he has a good, fun, he has a good laugh in his life, yeah. fun discos, Michael Jackson songs, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Harry Sylvester. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, do you like him? I like them both, you know. Yeah. But I'm going to go for security, I'm going to go for Barry Homeowner. Barry Homeowner. Because I'm sick of renting the fungalo. I'd yeah. love to be a homeowner, Bob. This is Barry. Um, I'd say it's to Jeff. Jeff, this is Barry. Barry yeah. Um, hi, I'm Barry. I'm a uh, I'm homeowner. I didn't know if you know own my yeah. own home. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, why are you terrific. mentioning that, Barry? That sounds like the kind of thing a prick would do. You know, I didn't think at first. I thought, how am I going to manage these mortgage payments? Yeah. Um, especially with travel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I live thirty miles away from work now. Yeah. But actually, I I have managed. I've been because of course I've been staying in more. Because yeah. it's so lovely being a homeowner and having your own home to enjoy. I've been decorating, doing a bit of interior design. It's been terrific. And an Englishman's home, after all, is this castle. I mean, it's a shame, you know, a lot of pubs are closing left, right and centre willy-nilly because people just don't go out as much. I think it's because people just want to stay in within their own environment. Yeah. And, and you know, just maybe have a bottle of wine. Yeah, I mean, evening. I've had a few friends over from the office yeah. and we've yeah. always eaten lasagna! <laughs> So I say, Good big I say, Gary, hey, Gary Kev, do you fancy coming over to my home that I own um, this evening? <laughs> <laughs> 
you know that kind of that's thing. That's good. Yeah. Well, that's that's me. That's me in a nutshell. Barry homeowner. I've got some questions from my blood relatives. Bob. All right. Um, right. For example. If you're doing an anecdote about a man, like yes. for example Gary Barry Homeowner, Barry Homer, would yeah. you refer to him as a fella? Like you would say that fella over there. Yes. Would you say that bloke? Or would you say that guy? I'd say bloke. You'd say bloke. 100%. You wouldn't say guy. I'd say say that bloke there. How long have you lived in the I'll south? Go and ask that bloke there. How long have you lived in the south? You would say I've said that since I was a since I was a bloke. tiny pepper pot. But you wouldn't say guy. I wouldn't say guy. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's Australian in it or something. I'd say gadgy. Oh well, you made me gadgy. I mean, we used gadgy. to say chaw. Chaw? Yeah, you used to call blokes chaw. That's a borough thing, is it? I don't know whether it's a borough thing or not. I think it is, because no one else has ever, ever heard of it. Have you ever used bodily fluids within a protest situation? Protesting? Quite a specific question, that. I don't know what that's come from. Um, Yours or those of someone else? Um, bodily fluids in a protest in a pro- Only in a protest situation. I mean, when I was a libertarian anarchist back in the day, in the mid-70s, mm-hmm. I once disrupted the exams... Um, at a, a university by sma- smacking um, a dustbin lid with me uh, penis, but uh, there was no fluids involved. <laughs> you didn't throw any blood? No, I don't think I did. And the penis remained? Oh, don't you didn't have to say I'd... that again. You know what I mean? Do you want to call us a little shit now? Oh, yeah, can I, please? Come on, please. You little shit. Thank you very much. You shitty little That's man. Enough. That's enough. That's enough. Final question. The state of you, you shit. <sighs> How did you get so shit? Thank you. Can I ask the final question? Yeah, of course. Um, Have you ever been on a jury? No, but when I was... um, Don't stop me, because I know it's not... So my answer is no. But um, Barry would like this. Yeah. Barry, (laughs) you know, like... uh, it would be good. I, it's sort of like a talking point around the dinner table. Is it a bit edgy? Your conversation starter. Yeah. A conversation starter. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so, anyone been on a jury? Anyone? <laughs> It'd be good. But I was so in that sense. I say yes, Barry. Um, beautiful home, by the way. Um, yes, Barry. Um, I was once a solicitor. Um, I think it was just a shoplifting case in a London Crown Court. Um, Brenda Blethwin was on the jury. So right. that was really strange for me. Brenda Blethwin, you know, ben, the actress. The actress. She was on the jury, right? And uh, you know, I kind of wanted to to tell her because I felt a connection because I'd seen her on the test. She's a really good actress. Yeah. In in the match. Was she Lee playing film. a juror? No, she, this was for real. This right. when I was a solicitor. This wasn't in Randall and Hopkirk the No, and I wanted to sort of whisper to her. Now. He's guilty. <laughs> you know, but pass I didn't. it on. <laughs> He's guilty. Pass it on. Look, Brenda, you must not tell anyone, right? But he's guilty of sin. Pass it on. So, um, no, did that really happen? And Barry would say, "This is going great, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, it's fantastic." Uh, possibly, possibly peak too soon, but yeah. Is this uh, music bothering anyone? Yeah, it's it's early um, uh, Midnight Oil, an Australian <laughs> band. Um, I quite like it in the background, especially during a starter yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Uh, um, uh, uh. Some, of edg- some of the edgier work. I've, sorry, Pat, I've never been to a di- I've been to one dinner party in my entire life. Really? Yeah. Oh, God, I, I hate the... I, no, that is... A, look, I swear on my little... I love my cats. I swear on their faces setting on fire. Yeah. Just out of the blue. Like, it's just instant. <laughs> Bang, they're Whoosh. gone. I said, where the hell has happened to your first good Monson? Yeah. And it, like, he wouldn't even be able to say it because his yeah. lips have gone, gone to shit. Charred. So... I've probably been to one dinner party really? in my life. Yeah. Is it a dinner party if you just get like the set menu for four from your local Chinese and some people come around with some cans? Ooh, because that's. Bit... And where do you eat them round the table? Just al al fresco, is no, it? No, I don't. I don't think. Not that it's something I've done. No, the, I don't I, know if that's a dinner party or not. I mean, I've lived, style. I've lived in my um, house that I'm in now for I think probably ten years, and I've never had anyone visit the, the house mention, mention. Um, other than family. Um, I don't really. Uh, you don't let them through the gate. Did you? Did you see? Did you see the Chrissy Hind documentary this week? I saw a little bit of it, and she said she was she's saying, a challenging individual, isn't she? Yeah, well, she said. I mean, I think she's incredibly talented. So fuck, I don't give a shit what she's like. But I thought it was quite nice when she said, "People now these days, because it didn't used to be like this, Andy. People are uh, tend to think these days to I'll present myself to the world via telling you what my opinions are." Yes. When I was young, it was that I'll present myself to the world by, say, being funny, yeah, 
or what do you know what I mean but yeah. now it's like here's my opinions things and I was just a lovely bit of the documentary when she was saying this and she said do you know what I wish these people would just fuck off <laughs> just <laughs> people in general and, and that's it wasn't these people she said do you know what I just wish people would fuck off <laughs> Uh, that's really interesting, Barry. When, when where was that documentary? Was it on iPlayer or or IT? It's ITV? Netflix, Netflix, surely. Yeah, I think so. I think you can get it across all the um, what all do they call them? All the outlets. All the outlets. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, as everyone finished, all the platforms. As everyone finished, I've got some photos of this house before I moved in. Oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. I think a bloody hoarder must have lived here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done a great job, Barry. <laughs> So I just want to say, Andy, yeah. I just want to say, if we're going to do these live shows we are. Yeah, sooner than people might think. Yeah. And I just want to take up people's time to say, look, you've got to follow me, you, or Athletico Mints on Twitter, because yep. that's the only place what you'll find out yep. how to get tickets. And you, we're only doing small venues, so you, they might sell quite might, quick. Exactly. You are at Real Bob Mortimer. Yeah. I am at Profanity Swan. Correct. We are at Athletico Mints, and we've also got AthleticoMints.com website. Go to them, follow them, Come and let see them into us. your life. Come and see us, hear Come us. Come and see the shambles. Oh, God, it'll be such a shambles. You know we haven't heard from for a while? Uh, your sitcom fella? Yeah, Vince Parsnips. Oh, fuck, I was right on bang on the... On the you were? Uh, yeah. yeah, now the sitcom, I've got a few names to suggest for it because we could have a pilot soon. Um, the Parsnips way. Yeah. Anyone for Parsnips. Don't like it. It's all two seventies. Athletic or Vince? Well, of course it's all two fucking seventies. Have, <laughs> have you heard the content? <laughs> Athletic or Vince? Parsnip or Monius? No. The Parsnips way? No. No. Well, let's let's go over there and hear what's been going on this week with Vince and his long-suffering wife Marion. Okay. Vince, Vince, where's the car gone, Vince? I've sold it, Marion. Oh. I suppose we can manage without it. Her accent's just changed a little bit there. I suppose we can manage without it. Are you putting the money towards our mountain bills and debt and all that? No, love. I'm upscaling. Time for a new motor. But they didn't have what I fancied down at the dealership. So I'm scouting around till I find what I'm looking for. What, what, what are uh, you Andy, looking Andy, for? Andy, I'm so sorry to could you, could you do... I love the way you say dealership. Could you really go for dealership? Dealer... You know... Sorry... No, love. No, love. I'm upscaling. Time for a new motor. But they didn't have anything I fancied down at the dealership. <laughs> so I'm scouting around till I find what I'm looking for. What are you looking for? No windows and the door's welded shut so you can just jump in through the window like on the Dukes of Hazard. Do you remember? Hey, hey, I'm after something like that. Do you remember tow bars? What were they all about? I'm after something like that. Indicators that made noises. You remember that? Hey, do you? Do you remember when your dad kept an axe in the boat inside a blanket and you found it by accident when you were getting your cricket set out at the beach and he took you to a smuggler's cave and he made you join the secret smuggler's club? You remember? And he just swear you'd never tell anyone about the axe or else your smuggling hands might drop off in the middle of the night. Do you remember? Hey? Do you remember not having seatbelts in the back? So you could stand up on that bit between the two front seats and he could fall over when your dad went round and round about too fast because he was getting stressed because he was sick of your fucking noise. <laughs> and if you don't shut up whine, then he'll pull his car over in a minute and you can get out and fucking walk. <laughs> I'm after something like that. Do you remember? Don't be blue, Vince. Don't be blue. Do you remember, Marion, when the draft used to come in through the window and the workings in your brass hand would freeze and seize up? What are you talking about, Vince? What's a brass hand? I think I need to go and speak to the councillor again, Marion. Oh, Vince. <laughs> South Africa. Quite a lot happened when I was over there. And there's a little yeah. story I'd like to tell you. I was there for 10 days, as you know. Yeah. So let's face it, I'm not going to be able to pull off more than 10 stories there. Eh? But... <laughs> <laughs> on a uh, one of the days, there's a really famous restaurant in Cape Town. People who've been, they'll know it. It's like a VIP place. It's on the beach near the harbour. Yeah. And you eat on the beach, and they yeah. cook the food, then bring it out to you on the beach and that. You get a lot of... Um... Are you sponsored by the beach or something? <laughs> I keep seeing it. 
<laughs> you get a lot of like the Johannesburg rappers there. <laughs> Yeah? yeah, and a lot of this... Uh, the, the Joe Berg beat boys. No, but it's big news, you know, big, big Is news. It? The South African rap scene, yeah. Some fella rapped at my son on an underground train in Barcelona once. What did he say I'm, to him? I'm going to save that for another podcast. OK, so it's very exclusive. The rapping podcast I'm going to do. It's really exclusive restaurant. Yeah. I want to em- emphasise that, right? Yeah. It's a bit like, a, say for you, a bit like a Phoenix restaurant <laughs> right. you know, in yeah. Sunderland. It's that posh, right? So they have a gate there. you got to... You have, you, you, you can't just turn up. I right. got in there because the production company got me in there. Um, they got bouncers on gates before you even drive to the restaurant. Really? Imp- I just want to say it's important, you know. Oh. Um, got flame lights on the beach and that. Um, weed phoned ahead. <coughs> Do you know Randall and Hopkirk? You know, I did a show called Randall and Hopkirk on the telly. Surprised you bring that up, yeah? Well, no, it's, it's really... Good, was it? Yeah, nobody's really big in South, South Africa. Hence. Well, do you have to go to, like... Um like conferences and stuff. No, I wouldn't do that, that sort of shit, but I'm saying that's what got me in there. <laughs> I'm sat on the table on the beach and I see a bloke in a daft outfit and that, so I want to order some food. So I beckon him over and I say, I want boiled lobster, right? And I said, Did you say please? Well, I probably did. I'm just saying, you know, like, no, all right, I want boiled lobster, please. That's better. But I said, if it isn't fresh, I'll set fire to myself, right? <laughs> And the restaurant will look stupid, but that was that was called a joke. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm. So he says, "Well, look, mate, you can choose your own lobster from the lobster pots by the rocks if you don't mind getting a little bit wet." Well, Andy, I had, as you know, I would my chino shorts on. Yeah, um, and he said the water will only come up to your knees. So I thought, I'm got, I'll go for it. Actually, pick me own lobster from the sea. Well, we climb th- over these rocks and we get to what is. It's actually an artificial pool, but it looks like it's part of the, the rocky environment. Right. He shines his torch into the pool, and in there you can see tens, if not hundreds, of lobsters, Andy. Really? Under the torch light. It's a nice thing to... I love doing this. That's a, that's a nice thing to have seen, isn't it, Andy? <laughs> yes. Isn't it, though? It's like when you catch for it. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he shines... Um, his torch on the lobsters. Mm-hmm. Then he turns around really quickly, cracks me around the head with his torch. Yeah. Right. He says, get in the fucking lobster pit, you prick. <laughs> That's Australian, isn't it? No, that was all right. Get in the fucking lobster pot, you prick. Something like that. I said, what the fuck are you doing? He says, shut your fucking face, fat boy. <laughs> right. I'm Charna, the rapper. <laughs> I said, shit, I didn't know. I thought you were the, the waiter because he had this, like, gown on. Right. And I'll stop the accent. He says, do waiters wear... Ga- well, do wait... I can't do it. Do waiters wear have, gowns. Have a go. <laughs> do waiters wear gowns worth over 20,000 rand, joke boy. I have a Timex gold-plated watch. Get in the fucking lab lobster pot. <laughs> and then he strikes me again with the torch, right? Now, I managed to uh, deflect this blow a bit with my arm, Andy, which I was pretty pleased about. Yeah. Because I deflected it. I said, look, I'm really sorry. I thought it was going to kill me. I said, I'm really sorry. I thought you were, you, you were the waiter. You don't have to kill me. Then I ne- hear another voice, quite a calm voice in the darkness, right? Put the torch down and <laughs> back off the fat guy. That's Australian, wasn't it? I can't tell anymore shines his torch up to the top of the rocks and there is Toofy he's the not- a really notorious Cape Town rapper right. he's got a gun I right. promise he's got it's the first time I've ever seen a gun was it a shiny gun well I, I, it was, he had a, do you know he might not have had a gun but as far as he's in a black <laughs> I thought it was it's a gun Jesus thanks mate I said I think he was going to kill me he said just pick up a lobster no nope. <laughs> American <laughs> <laughs> Just pick up a lobster and get back to your table. <laughs> now that's Aussie. So I climbed up the rocks to make me escape, and as I passed two feet, I said, no, it's really kind of you, but why, why did you help me? And he said, it's a pleasure, Mr. Hookkirk. Give more respects to Mr. Randall. I said, I will do. And he says, and by the way, he wasn't going to kill you. He was going to stick a lobster up your anus. <laughs> So well, that was well, a lucky that, escape, that have killed you then. Well, I don't know. Can I just ask Andy? Did you think that story was a bit like Castaway with Tom Hanks? Yeah, a bit. Well, I've never seen Castaway with Tom Hanks, and I kind of wish I'd never heard that story. So okay. yeah, yeah, I'll say yeah. Oh, that's nice. That was the idea. Can I pitch some TV shows to you? you if you feel you must pitch, I, I, you're you're in the industry. You 
some would say balls deep in the TV industry. I'm about to. Hey, I went to sell a show to the BBC the other day, and I think they've took it. They've said yes. So really. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. I could talk you through the processing period. Well, I'll tell you, I'll give you process. the pictures. I'll just, I'll give you the, what do they call it? An it's elevator a pitch. pitch? It's a pitch. What do they do? Let's just give it in like one, like a capsule pitch. But, well, like with, from now on, it shall be known as a capsule pitch. The, right. uh, you know, the best capsule. An hourglass pitch. The best capsule is either the Lemsip capsule or the Anodin. Would you say that's right? Yeah, probably, yeah. So should we call it a Lemsip pitch? Right. Go on. I want to call it an hourglass pitch because it starts and then well, by the time Andy, it gets to Andy, the end, you, you can I've fuck off. It. It's a lemsip pitch. Lemsip pitch. Right. All right, it's called In You Fucking Go. <laughs> right, and it's Jedward, and they get dropped into a, the top of a really high industrial chimney. Yeah. This is just the pilot episode, the first okay. one. Um, and just see how it goes. Would, would that be worthy well, of a commission? Andy, I'm sorry to interrupt your floor here, but on three separate occasions to three separate broadcasters, I promise you, me and Vic have pitched putting a celebrity in a chimney. Really? I promise you. <laughs> An we, industrial chimney or a... No, we were thinking of just... A like homeowner's chimney. Got, no, gothic, you know, big, decent-sized chimney in an old inn or in a manor right, house Right, the kind something. of one you get a chimney And just putting on. cameras up there and seeing who lasts see the longest cup. and see what they say. OK. Um, so it's been... So Kai for me, it's so I know because I've tried that it will fail, but yeah. I like it. Okay, the other one is Jedward can brothers be lovers. Um, Just to hold on a minute, what? is this Barry Homeowner conversation start? Hey guys, imagine you were pitching a television show. Go on, what would you pitch? What would you bloody pitch? Well, here's one I've got for you. This is called. Um, I've been thinking about this for quite a while now since I've been watching repeats at the top of the pops. Um, Ice Zombie Boney M. Hold on, get stop the voice. Like, I want to consider it properly. Ice. Zombie. Zombie. Boney M. Imagine so Boney what M. What happens in a show? Well, it's cartoon. It's animation. It's oh. very cool. Computer animation. You can do it in half an hour. Okay, Boney M, they're back, but they're in ice zombie form this time. Bigger, more powerful, even more melodic. <laughs> but what do they do? Solve fucking mysteries? Solve mysteries. What the fuck else are they going to do? Record hits, solve mysteries. I like There's it. There's your half an hour. I like it. I 22 don't... minutes of him getting on on the commercial channels. I don't even know that there need to be zombies, but send that in to me. Is that I'll... too much? Send zombies? that in to me. We'll have another meeting. Okay, the zombies can be optional. Um, Another animation I've got It's called Bloody Waffles. Right. Now, what it is, it's these really annoying cartoon waffles. Right. And they get up to stuff, and people always just go, oh, those bloody waffles. <laughs> but we've got a commercial offshoot as well, so we can sell the waffles in the shops called Bloody Waffles, and it'll probably have to be raspberry sauce instead of blood. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. there's blood in the waffles. Yeah. So it works on more than one level. Bloody waffles. I'll put that down as a maybe, yeah? Okay, right. Okay. So I'm just saying, I'm just so I'm a baddie, yeah. and I'm just unlocking a safe. I've got baddies in my next pitch. Okay, well, I'm just thinking maybe there's a, like, so I'm just doing the ticking thing on a safe yeah. lock. Yeah, yeah. And that, then there's a hand, a little thin sort of battery <laughs> made of batter hand yeah. on my shoulder. I say, oh, You're getting it. bloody waffles. Bloody waffles. Maybe. If it hadn't been for them bloody waffles, I would have bloody gotten away with it. Maybe. Yeah, that's a maybe. One Punch Justice. Um, it's kind of like the cook report, but you you get the baddies, you expose them Can in the street. Can you drop the voice? I thought we were doing a dinner party. No, that, that's incidental. I want to listen to your pitches one, properly. One Punch Justice. Oh, going on with it? It's yeah. baddies, you expose yeah. them, and then they just one punch in the face to end it. One punch baddies. One punch no, justice. I don't like it. This sounds like this. I just want to see more baddies getting punched in the face on the telly because it doesn't happen enough. Yeah, well, I don't. Do you know, I watched the Russian hooligan thing last night. Did you watch it? The Russian hooligan thing from last week? From the Russian hooligan thing. I saw, yeah. And, and ultimately, it's, it's compulsive seeing people punch and kick and that. But. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm a bloody homeowner now and I've grown up. Well, the last one I've got is an entire channel. It's just called Knockers and Fighting. Okay, yeah. That's it. Them, I think them, that's probably been pictures. done in Eastern Europe. Now, can you help me out with me next tale, Andy? Because it's Mark Lawrenson. Oh, I'd love to. We haven't heard about him for a while. Now, there's a voice I can do without lapsing into well, Australian it's be better and South, South African, isn't it? Get out of the lobster pit! <laughs> Something like that, you that, prick. That's good. You prick. I'll dub that in from for earlier. Get your P45 and get out of here, you prick! <laughs> So, Mark was at home on Tuesday, actually. Right. And he was watching Holmes Under the Hammer with Barbara, and he got a bit of a sweat on. 
Right. Yeah. So Mark says, "You ready? Ready. Can you turn the heating down, Barbara? I've got a bit of a sweat on. Can you? Can you turn the heating down, Barbara? I've got a bit of a sweat on. I've still got it. <laughs> I've still yeah, got very it. much so. Oh, Mark, the heating isn't on. You're sweating." Because, as usual, your shirt's too tight and you're getting anxious that your valuation won't be the same as the estate agent's on Home and the Hammer. And he says, If I take my shirt off, will you give me a wipe down with the Belinda wipes? If I take my shirt off, will you give me a wipe down with the Belinda wipes? So she takes his shirt off for him and it is absolutely sodden and a real heavy weight. She begins to wipe away his back. But no sooner has she cleaned off the sweat then it begins to pool again round his lower back, you know? Are we seeing hairy back or non-hairy back? It's just, just at the bottom the there, picture. it's a bit, and it traps traps the sweat a right, bit, okay. you know, on his trouser line. What's going on, Mark? I've never known you sweat like this. Are you worried about something? Mark says, it's Robson Green, Barbara. He wants me to leave you and go and live with him, and I don't know what to do. It's Robson Green, Barbara. He wants me to leave you and go and live with him, and I don't know what to do. Christ, Mark, that's a bit of a bombshell, she says. Mark says, I'm sorry as fuck, Barbara. <laughs> I'm sorry as fuck, Barbara. It, it came totally out of the blue when I was at the outlet centre with him on Sunday. It came totally out of the blue when I was at the outlet centre with him on Sunday. Barbara says, well, well, Mark, do you love him? He says, I don't know, Barbara. <laughs> I don't know, Barbara. I know I love you and both of our rabbits, Paul and Unheeny. I know I love you and both of our rabbits, Paul and Dunheeny. Unheeny. Unheeny. You know, like the Nigerian with an N. Oh, un, un, unheeny. Paul and Unheeny. But Robson is a very exciting man. But Robson is a very exciting man. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. At this point, Robson Green walks in, yeah. straight in through the front door. Does he not knock? No, it's straight in. Okay, now. Chancer. Well, what's your answer, Laro? <laughs> Have you told the wife yet, or did you shit out? <laughs> Mark says, I've just told her, I'm very confused. I've just told her, I'm very confused. If I came to live with you, would we get married? If I came to live with you, would we get married? Well, I don't think we should get a heat of our ourselves, like, but I, why not, if it all pans out nice and that? <laughs> Mark says, are you any good with Belinda Whites? <laughs> Are you any good with Belinda wipes? Robson says, I me mum taught us all about Belinda wiping <laughs> when I was a burn. I'm right fucking swift on a Belinda. Mark says, what about the rabbits, Barbara? What about the rabbits, Barbara? Would it be OK if I took Mkini and you kept Paul? Would it be all right if I took... <laughs> Would it be all right if I took Mkini and you kept Paul? <laughs> I don't think that would be fair on Unheeny, Mark. He might get lonely. Ah, oh, fuck that, Pet! We could get a rabbit friend from Pets at home at the Oodlet Centre. Hey, and we could call it Rafa Benitez. Talking of Rafa Benitez, I want your assurance, Mark, that Rafa Benitez will be invited round for tea at least twice a week and for a sleepover at least once a month. Mark says, Robson, I can't guarantee that. Robson... I can't guarantee that. Rafa Benitez is foreign. Rafa Benitez is foreign. He might not do sleepovers. He might not do sleepovers. He might leave Newcastle. He was very disappointed with the January transfer window. He might leave Newcastle. He was very disappointed with the January transfer window. You what? No Rafa Benitez is part of the deal? You can forget it. I'm off round Sting's gaff. See if I can prize him away from Trudy. Ah, Rafa loves a bit of loot music. And he's gone. <gasps> so, obviously, he only wanted Mark to get to Rafa, obviously. So Mark says, sorry about that, love. I hope you're not upset. Sorry about that, love. I hope you're not upset. He says, well, she says, it would have been nice to get a break from you, but never mind. I suppose it's best for Paul and Heaney. Hey, <laughs> you're still sweating like a pig in cling film. <laughs> Mark says, because he's always got a lie, hasn't he? Looks like it was the valuation that was worrying me after all. Looks like it was the valuation that was worrying me after all. And they both laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you... Hey, Andy, <laughs> did you think that story was a bit like a Ken Loach movie? Um, so sort of gritty but unwatchable. 
Well, that's unfair, I think. Right, I've got a song to finish us this week, and it's a little bit of a soft rock anthem. Okay, is there anything, anything you want me to do, Tal? If you could just wave your arms from side to side. No, is that, well, you know I can't wave me on because of my bad shoulder. Is that what you're trying to set me up for? <laughs> Fucking injury. Maybe it is, yeah. All right, well, just, just wave an imaginary lighter in the All air. All right. Just mobile phone or something. Whatever. Here we go. Son, I am your father, and I want you to evade the mistakes that I have made. I'm here to tell you what you have to do, so look into my eyes and listen to me too. Son, you're at the start of your life, an innocent boy with no trouble or strife. Let me lead the way, let me show you how. You'll thank me one day, and I'll tell it to you now. I would give it ten minutes if I were you. Go watch the telly or maybe make a brew. Just hold it in a while, cause the stench in there is vile. I'd give it ten minutes if I were you. I would give it ten minutes if I were you. Just go and watch the telly or maybe make a brew. Just hold it in a while, cause the stench in there is vile. So I would give it ten minutes if I were you. That would be right. That, I, that would be done by the Eagles, maybe or Meatloaf. Toe, I'm toe, thinking. Toe. Meatloaf. You're thinking Meatloaf. Yeah, it's got that yeah. Jim Steinman kind well, of feel about well, it. Well, I mean, it's a little bit. I don't know what to say about that because I couldn't help laughing, but I hated myself for laughing. So that's my comment on it. Right. All right. You appeal to the basest part of I your suppose. soul. I suppose. Oh well, there we there we are. And that's the end of the podcast. Join us again next week for Join, more. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. See you next time. Bye. 